My name is Sherry. Thanks for joining me today in my stamp studio. I have a really pretty card I'm gonna show you today. It's not a hard card, but it is one of those cards that if you don't, have you've never done the technique before, you're like, I'm not really sure how to do it. And it is also one that you want to do either under good lighting or on a sunny day, because it's one of those all white cards and it doesn't have any color until you add the color. And so you kind of have to be able to see what you're working with until the color magically appears. So I'm gonna be using the Happy Birthday to You. Not only is this a beautiful stamp set with some really pretty fonts and sentiments, but it's free. So it's free until the end of March with the $50 purchase. And you can also right now purchase some coordinating dies that go with it. They're part of the coordination special that's ongoing right now, and they are a limited edition. So, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, there is a small chance that they could run out before the stamp sets do. So if you love them, I would recommend that you move them to your shopping list now and wait to get things like stamps. Stamps never run out unless there's a run out day um, because Stampin' Up! makes their own stamps. So if you love these dies, get them and you are gonna love them. I should have pulled over. I have a couple of more sam sample cards I'm gonna make with the stamps and the dies. And so by the end, I'll show you all of the ones I've made with them because they're fabulous. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use some pretty colors. We're gonna use Purple Posy, which isn't available anymore in ink pad form because there were some quality issues, but you can get it in blends and in the cardstock and stuff. It's a beautiful color. So we're gonna use that. And then we're gonna use Shimmer White cardstock and then just a Whisper White background that I've already just folded. It's standard card size folded in half. So we are going to work with this sheet. It's a quarter sheet of Shimmer White. I have a craft white stamp pad that mine has broken. I have a new one, and so this one's going to be seeing the trash soon because I can't get the lid to go back on. So it is what it is. We are going to use this, the dies come with a cake stand, and I'm going to use that. So I don't actually need to stamp this. So I'm just going to stamp it down here, and it doesn't matter that the stand goes off because I need extra paper for all of the things I'm gonna use. So there's no sense in wasting that when I'm gonna chop it off anyways. So stamp this. And then I need another extra flower that I'm gonna cut off. So again, I don't need to ink the whole thing because I don't need to waste paper or cardstock. I mean, um, embossing powder. So I just need to get this one top flower up here. get that so even though the lid doesn't go in here because it's a pigment ink it stays and i have tried and tried and even my husband's tried and normally he's like the master person to get these back on so it is what it is the lid's actually been off of it um ever since we made christmas birdhouses in december and it's still okay so i you know i just i have a new one because i bought a new one so it's hard to throw something away that seems to be fine it just looks janky so this is white powder and i know you probably can't see because i can barely see but it just needs to stick where there's the white crafting kit so you can see i got the one flower which is what i needed and then the cake so now we're going to heat this with the embossing gun and just pour all this back in you could also stand up by some new white powder because Mine is so old that it has now other colors of powder in it. Mostly from when I use my tray, but you can see it's got an old logo on it. I've had this for a long time. Unless you spill embossing powders, it's really kind of hard to use them up. So I'm gonna get my embossing gun hot. Stand up where you can see me. And then you wanna heat this till it turns shiny white, which is another reason. You can see right here where it's starting to turn that you need good light to do this because the white on white embossing powder is can be harder to see when it's turning and you don't want to melt it past the point. But once your gun's hot, it should move, it should melt quickly and you can kind of see where it goes from kind of a yellow tinge embossing powder to a shiny white. So once I think I have it all done, I just put my gun up here and I get all the rest. And 
my heat from the bottom. It's, if you haven't watched my videos before, because 25 years ago when I started stamping, 26 years ago, however long it's been, I used an iron because embossing guns didn't exist. And so heating from the bottom was just the way we did it. I'm gonna actually open some new plates because these are really dirty and I'm working with white cardstock. So let's open some new plates. You can buy these again from Stampin' Up. And if you, I'll put the, um, the order number down both on my website and on the YouTube video. Because my other ones have some black cardstock stuck in them and I want my pretty white paper to get dirty. So here we go. We're going to do, we have all this paper to work with now. But you, depending on how you've embossed it, you may need to like finagle it to get it to go. And because it's super staticky in our houses right now, if you live where your heat's on, you don't want to spend all of your time. Like I'm going to do a couple and then I'm going to put that back through. So let's get these first. There's no sense in placing them all and then having this static lifted up because it's right now, well, it's so staticky, that's a, a chance you take. So let's roll this through and then we'll just come back and instead of spending a bunch of time placing it and having it mess up, we'll just do, and you can hear the static on it and you can see stuff's already sticking to it. My brand new clean plates and it just takes one pass. So there's our cake with no stand, but here's our new stand, which is just a, it's a different, it's a taller stand than what comes on the stamp. It's really pretty also cut out like in gold. So now we'll get this piece and we'll do the flower. And then these are just some extra leaves that come in. So you can see why we didn't want to um, use up any more than we had to of the paper to just stamp stuff. And we just need this one flower right here. We will have to trim off. Uh, see how it goes. There we go. We'll have to trim off that little piece that connects it to. That actual piece will take all three of the flowers off of your cake. So either you can put dimensionals under them or so you cannot have a cake on your card at all if you just want the flowers. It just removes them off the cake. If that's how you're using it. It's not how I'm using it on this card today though. So you can see, I'll just take the snips now. Right here. And I'm just gonna snip those apart. So now I have one freestanding flower and some scrap paper. And then when these leaves come out, they give you two bunches of leaves. I do have my um, take your pick tool laying over here. Grab it out. These have kind of tiny holes. Just pop those out. So you end up with two sets of leaves that are kind of like berry leaves, and these are done. I'm not doing anything to those because they're in shimmer white cardstock, so they're pretty. So those are done. And then these right here are leave leaves and I'm gonna paint these green. So I'll put these over in my painting stack. And they also have, um, they come out with veins on them. And then I'm gonna take the purple posy cardstock that I have. And this is actually the basket die from the Tropical Oasis. See, it's in the mini catalog, it's really pretty. I'm gonna put this in here and then it does need the blue, the blue plate or a shim. So if you don't have the blue plate, just take one of the regular plates and then add a piece of typing paper or something underneath it. It's really pretty. And in this subtle color, it just gives a really nice basket. 
kind of weave and gives some nice texture to it too. So that's the background of our card. Now we're gonna paint it. So to paint this, we are going to use one of my favorite techniques. Now we don't need to paint the stand because we're gonna use that as is. And then these buds here will be as is. Go ahead and put those there. Let's start with the yellow. It's nice to start with the lightest colors. Now you can see, this is why you also need to have a nice bright day or some good lights. So I'm got, I have um, pineapple punch and this color will be going away. Uh, I don't know. Let me see the year on it. Does it have the year? I don't think it has the year anymore. I feel like it's an outgoing in color, but sometimes I get confused. So this is an empty Wink of Stella. You can use a Wink of Stella that has paint in it, and then you don't need to do this step. But I have lots of, ink, of empty ones, and um, this is white shimmer paint. You could also use the other color. Now I have yellow. My hand is now pineapple punch. Or it looks kind of jaundiced. <laughs> so you just need some paint in the top of this because like I said, mine is empty. So just get a little dab of shimmer paint to kind of reactivate your empty. I'm using this for the paint brush. And then I just want the centers of my flowers. Try not to get a whole bunch on the embossing itself because you don't it will cover it up. You can wipe it off at the end, but it's just easier to kind of keep it off there. So there's our centers. That's all the yellow we need. So then just kind of scrape that off. Then we'll move to the green. Because if a tad bit of yellow gets into the green, it'll be okay. If a tad bit of yellow gets into the purple, it can make it look you don't want too much shimmer paint because otherwise it dilutes the color. You just need a tad. And you're just, I'm getting the ink on the tops of your lids by squishing them down. And you're going for a subtle color. So don't feel like you have to put a ton of color on here. It's a frosty white. It's a really pretty winter wedding card or a winter you know, right now when we're in February and March where it's still cold, but we're dreaming of spring or winter wedding, especially because it's kind of frosty looking. So there's those. If you may get shimmer paint on either your pad because we did do this at camp. All you need to do is take a wet wipe or something and wipe it off. So I'm just going to go in here and paint my leaves. The cake's not going to get painted. I want a nice white cake. So the cake on it will stand on its own. And you just paint. So I'm going to do these leaves and then I'll come back and finish off the flower for you. Okay, so we've done the soft sea foam. Now I have Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape. So I'm going to do my Highland Heather first it's the lighter and then I'll go back in and just add some accents of the gorgeous grape to give it some depth. Oh and I missed all the leaves on there. So I was trying to go fast even though I'm gonna speed that part up. So again you want to kind of just do a petal at a time and then that way you're not covering up the embossing. The secret's to not let your to not get too much on here because you don't want it to dry up. but you don't want it to be globby. So just keep enough shimmer paint on here that you can kind of move the ink around, but not so much that it makes it be a, a yucky mess. Just a, a tiny bit of practice and you'll have the feel for what you need. So let me go back and do these flowers and I'll also get these leaves. I don't like to have to clean them more than necessary because you're wasting shimmer paint. So that's why it's kind of annoying that I missed the green. But I'll finish these and then I'll come back and do the grape for you. Okay, I have um, fixed the green over here and I've added some of the gorgeous grape highlights to these flowers. 
So then there's some tiny little buds. And I want those to be gorgeous grape just so they have some nice contrast. So these I'm gonna try to get just inside the little circles which when you clean your brushes, if you kind of smash them on your paper, it over time, it widens them out. And if the wider they get, then it's harder to go back on little things like this and fill them in. So be gentle with your brushes. You know, they're just empty Stella's, but to use them properly, you want to take care of them. Some of these empty Stella's I've had for years since we've had Stella's and they've been empty. So you can see this darker purple just kind of gives it a nice little highlight. And I've just added some in here. Let me show you on this one. This one has everything. It has some buds. So here on these little buds, you just add just a little dot of the darker purple. And then I just want to add some of the darker to a few of the petals, not all of them, because then otherwise all of your petals will end up being dark and then you've kind of ruined the, the highlight effect. But just pick a few. And even though I haven't used Purple Posy ink anywhere on here, the overall feel with this is really nice. So then just clean your brush off. And this dries really quickly. You can take a wet wipe or a tissue or something and just get that out. I will when I'm done. So now we just have to stick it together. If you ever, um, for most of the time when I do these videos and I cut the part out of me painting right here, I do end up putting the, a fast sped up version over on my Instagram channel a couple of days after I've posted them on YouTube. So you can always go back and watch all of it but it doesn't have talking and I've just sped up the whole thing so you can see me paint it. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, that might be something you wanna do. Okay, so you wanna start first with your cake. So let's mount this here. And then you're gonna mount your stand. I'm trying to get most of these little things out here. Some of them are going to get covered up by the ribbon, so it doesn't really matter. So this stand you can see is just so it gives more length to your cake than the one that's on the actual stamp because it's just a little short one. Just gives you two styles of cake stand in a different thing that you can work with. And I'm going to take my glue dots. Just take them to the base of your flowers. And these posy ones I didn't do anything to because they're just on the shimmer white. I'm going for a light and airy card so the white works well with that. I'm just going to lift that up and stick these down underneath there. When your card's all done, if you feel like there's any place that you needed to add more soap paint, you can go back then and do it. This can go a little bit off the card because this is going to be mounted on the white. Okay, green ones. And a lot of times with these, I stick my whatever I'm sticking it with, glue dot usually, on top, because then when I go to lift this up, it sticks to the image itself. So you can lift this up and it doesn't stick until I'm on there and then I just press it on to hold it there. If you stick it to the bottom, sometimes it grabs itself before you've got it where you want it. And again, you can use your take your pick tool. Mine's laying right here. I don't know why you keep picking up my scissors. Both work. But because that's on top, now I can push it when I've got it where I want it to go. So we have our little one last little flower, but before that, this is why I haven't stuck it on my card yet. 
I have some Mr. White tool. So I'm going to tie it, pull a nice generous portion of that. The yellow ink on my hands bothering me. Okay, and so I've got it doubled over. Tie it around where the cape stand is. And this ribbon sticks on itself, so kind of hold it so it's touching as little as possible. So pull that there. Get it up so it's around the cake stand. And then I'm gonna try to get big loops here because if they're big now, then they won't stick on each other as much when I pull them through. So see, try not to let them touch because as soon as they touch, they grab. So pull those through till you have as much as you can with still having two little bows down there. And then once you have that, pull it tight. So you can see now I have two big bows and then my two little bows. And that's pulled tight, so it's going to hold those two little ones. Kind of separate those out of the way again. And then take this little piece right here. And tie another bow. And pull it tight. And then just take it and separate it all, because it does all kind of smash in on itself from the pulling. So just kind of fluff it back up. And these go in a an envelope fine, but they look really pretty if you put it on, just put your card on top of a gift. You could just wrap your gift in some really pretty soft sea foam or purple posy, plain colored paper that you could get at any place that sells plain colored wrapping paper and then just have your card on top as the decoration. And it gives a nice fluffy design. And then I'm gonna take a dimensional this is why you want to put this on after you do your bow so you'll be able to see it. And then just add it down the bottom of. And then before I put that on, just in case you don't stamp your words well, I'm just going to go back to my gorgeous grape. And I'm going to pick the happy birthday just because I like the font, but you could also just celebrate if it's a wedding. And if you do it this way, if you mess up when you stamp right now, then you can just fold your card over. That stamped perfectly, but you could fold your card over and then put this on the front and you haven't messed up a whole sheet of cardstock. Because sometimes, you know, our, it's when we stamp our words, but see, you could flip this over, stamp your words there and put your card here. So do that before you've mounted anything together. And if you don't stamp your words well, you haven't wasted this whole sheet of cardstock. that on there and you have a really pretty wintry spring frosty if it gets to be later in the season and you want to lose the frost color of it then switch from the frost white shimmer paint to the champagne mist and it'll be a little less frosty although I mean it does look like frosting so but that would lose a little bit of the frost effect if you'd rather have it be a little less frosty and a little more just shimmery so I hope you enjoy that. Remember the cake stamps are free through the end of March and the dies are a limited edition purchase while supplies last. So right now they're not showing up on any kind of low inventory, but it can go from um, one great video or somebody posting something beautiful somewhere and all of a sudden everybody wants them. So if you want them and they're on your list, better safe than sorry and get them now. And I have a couple of more tutorials that I am planning on posting, but if they would run out, then I'm not going to post them. <laughs> so, but I do have one that has, um, I have two posted right now. So I guess I just have one left. I have one that has, um, just uses the flowers. I have one that I've done the watercolor pencils with, and then I'm going to do one that has the 
shimmer paste. So it looks like frosting, real frosting. So that's what I have coming up for you. Everybody have a great day. Bye.